Hi, I'm Dale, and I'm going to talk about some of the discoveries that have influenced my life. I'm sure you'll relate to some and probably start remembering your own instead of listening to me. They're sort of chronological, but with jumps ahead now and then. I discovered chocolate at about age five when I would eat Hershey's straight out of the can with a spoon. I have a glass of chocolate milk almost every morning since then, which means I've had over 21,000 glasses to this day, plus malts, ice cream, etc. I keep going back and forth from Hershey's to Nestle's, and the containers make good nuts and bolts boxes. I discovered I could draw at least a little better than some of my classmates in second grade when I was asked to paint a couple murals for the halls at Butterfield Elementary in Watertown, New York. Plus, my mom said I was artistic, and moms don't lie. That was my first Mickey. I discovered Disney, meaning Mickey and Friends, when I was three. My first movie ever was Peter Pan when it originally came out. Then came the Mickey Mouse Club, the original one. When I was six, I decided I wanted to work for Walt Disney. In the mid to late 50s, Davy Crockett and Zorro were by far my biggest heroes. I discovered the value of teasing at about seven. My sole purpose in life was to annoy my brainiac brother daily. He did push me off the piano bench once and broke my collarbone and bounced a rock off my head later. Teasing led to my fondness and admiration for the art of sarcasm. I discovered girls as good things in the second grade. Mary Blake and Mary Smith were my first loves. They may not have known it though. At recess we played that if you got caught by a girl, they kissed you. The porch was safe base. I stayed there most of the time because I was an idiot. My dad is responsible for helping me discover amusement parks. It was about 1956 when your sister could get away with hanging your brother at places like Adventure Town in upstate New York, and outlaws riding into town firing real guns, an enchanted forest and land of a thousand and one animals in Frontier Town and Rail City. I sort of discovered rock when Elvis was on the Ed Sullivan Show, and my old brother would tell me about it since I was too young to stay up to watch. We would sing Hound Dog at the bus stop, but I really discovered rock for myself the year the Beatles came over in 64. It was the perfect time to be a teen at that great moment in music history, followed by the music of the revolutionary 60s. Jumping ahead to college, I didn't discover alcohol until then because I was a good kid. But there were some bad times with 3-2 beer and Boone's Farm apple wine, which eventually led to better things, thank goodness. Being from Cincinnati, I must say that Kentucky bourbon is still the drink of choice. And Old Crow, General Grant's and Mark Twain's favorite, is mine too. I'm not going to get real specific about discovering sex, to your relief, but I will say that during college, a couple movies in the late 60s had a good deal of influence on that experimenting generation, like Zeffirelli's Romeo and Juliet and The Graduate, along with R. Crumb's Fritz the Cat. Enough said. I didn't discover popcorn, it just happened as a Sunday night ritual when Dad, with Dad popping popcorn in an iron skillet during the Ed Sullivan Show. Then I had a college roommate who came from a popcorn farm in Bucyrus, Ohio. I've experimented a lot with it and now take pride in being a popcorn connoisseur who knows the secrets of perfect popping and have recipes for cheese, caramel, and perfect regular. I didn't know that there was such a person or term as gay when I started college. Remember, we're talking the late 60s. Then one of my college roommates, who was in fashion design, as we discovered later, ended up being the first gay performer to be signed with a major record label. Oh yeah, did I mention that one of my kids is gay? Mind expansion wasn't necessarily something you discovered, but more like explored. And like the earlier slide on sex, I'm not going to expound, but rather let you imagine what you will, reminding you that this was the late 60s with Woodstock and Haight-Ashbury and Carnaby Street and Hendrix and Janice and the most amazing Pink Floyd, Santana and Firesign Theater. One of man's greatest discoveries came to fruition when we walked on the moon. 
It was supposed to happen on my birthday day, but they moved it up a few hours, which was a bummer. But it was beyond incredible to see this happen live, imagine live, in 1969. We watched on our small black and white TV in our dorm room. You cannot imagine. I don't know of an equal. Sometimes you can be lucky enough to marry the beauty queen. Mary and I met in film class at UC and got married instead of going to graduation. I can't say I discovered her, but did discover what it means to find the best thing in your life. For over 40 years, it continues to amaze how lucky one can be. Even in college, we couldn't fathom the idea of anything computer-like being smaller than a series of refrigerator-sized machines that were totally unprogrammable. I remember the hours and hours it would take my engineering roommate just to get a continuous perforated paper printout of Snoopy made up of, of printed numbers and letters. Computers are a pretty good discovery. My dad's death helped me discover a daunting reality. He was one of the most spiritual men on earth, the kind that prayed on his knees. I was present when he cried out in extreme pain, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, at the end of his short bout with cancer, pleading for relief and getting none. That's when I discovered we are on our own. It was fun discovering Italy and that it's a whole lot better place than Missouri. If you haven't been, then go. I doubt you'll find anyone that's been there that doesn't believe it's a magical place, even if you lose your passport in Rome. Uh, the Amalfi Coast, the Isle of Ischia, the medieval mountain towns, my oh my. Uh, New England's pretty cool too. Discovering your past is such an important thing. My mom was a genealogist of the family and I inherited her piles of papers and work. And thank goodness for Ancestry.com. A family can get so totally lost if someone doesn't step up to trace the lines. And though, yeah, I even discovered we have a direct bloodline to someone on the Mayflower, which means we're bonafide. I discovered how cool Florida was when I was four when we traveled by car from Indiana with no interstates for days to get to Fort Myers Beach. It always seemed to be an exotic place. You don't work there, you just visit and play. I think that's still true, sort of. I had dreamed of going to Disneyland since it opened, but couldn't. But when Disney World opened, it was close enough. Thank you.